Steve, you tweeted last night, genuine question, is Paul Maurice actually not good, <laughs> that good of a coach, or does he pretty much always have a bad team, bad goalie, or both? What prompted you to say that? Okay. Paul Maurice's record as an NHL coach, I don't have it in front of me, but I'm pretty sure it's abysmal. Jesse, are you able to... Oh, no, hello. No, that's the wrong Paul Maurice. No, it's not. No, no. Is this Paul Maurice? Yeah, that's Paul Maurice. Sorry, that's what? Maurice Paul. Maurice Paul. He's, he's, a, he's a little baby in that picture. Though. His first head coaching job, he was like 28. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. <laughs> so, let's read his stats from the OHL, where he played for the Windsor <laughs> Compuware Spitfires. And they had to be called Compuware back then. So, Paul Maurice's first head coaching job in the NHL was with the Hartford Whalers. So even though he is 49, he's only 49, he's not even 50 yet, his NHL head coaching career began in 1995. Wow, 22 years. It also says he was an assistant during the 95-96 season, so I can only assume someone got fired and then he got promoted to head coach sometime during 95-96. His team has missed the playoffs... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times. They've lost in the first round one, two, three, four, five times. The only time, how many times have they gone past the first round? One? In 2002, they lost in the Stanley Cup final. In 2000, they, the they beat the Leafs to get there, with, by the with, way. Yeah, with the Carolina Hurricanes. So uh, he, right. he was, yeah, head coach of the Carolina team that beat the Leafs with Jeff O'Neill. And in 2009, the Hurricanes lost in the conference final. Did I forget Nine? that? Wow. I forgot that too. Yeah. Hey, they've won a cup, so <laughs> yeah. weird. And, and he's been the coach there twice. Yeah. yeah. In 2000, what, what year did the Hurricanes win the Stanley Cup? That was 2006, 2006, right? He was head coach of the Toronto Marlies at the time, who, by the way, lost in round one. So his record as a head coach is terrible. But I'm like, okay, he keeps getting hired. And we always joke about like Randy Carlisle, for example, how he won a cup and he can just ride that for the rest of his career. That's not necessarily true. The Ducks are doing fine this year, you know, but whatever. John Tortorella, prior to this season, shut up. None of you agreed that he was a good coach. Stop. None of you agreed with that, especially after the World Cup. None of you agreed. Uh, I still don't know that he is. I think he's got a great goaltender. I know he's the coach of the first place team. I mean, it doesn't matter. He's the coach of the first place team. But prior to this year, you would have agreed with me that, yeah, he won a Stanley Cup in 2004, and he's been riding that ever since, basically. The formula has been there. Start well, peter off, blow up, get fired. With the Canucks, it didn't even, they didn't even have the get good part. No, they started bad they and blew ended up. bad. Yeah. And got mad. <laughs> um the Canucks, here's how high the standard for the Canucks used to be. They fired um, they Alain fired Vigneault <laughs> after a first-round playoff loss. And I believe almost a President's Trophy. They, they, not almost. Yeah, they had it that year. A yeah. President's Trophy. It was yeah. a President's Trophy. Yeah, yeah, that was so stupid. Because they won like two in a row or three in a row? Yeah, something Some, crazy. Something crazy, yeah. And it's firing crazy. Alain Vigneault. Man, never bet against him. The Rangers are good again. I know. It's unbelievable. But now, Paul Maurice doesn't have that. He doesn't have that crazy track record. And people were like, oh, he's been riding the 2002 run for his whole career. He's riding a loss in the Stanley Cup final? Are you sure? I don't think so. Now, but then I started to think, okay, who? what are all the teams that Paul Maurice had? Okay, he had the Hart- Hartford Whalers. <laughs> Brutal. I'm struggling to remember who any of the players on those teams were. He Rod Brindamore. He might have coached Nick Kiprios. I'm not sure. I don't think so. I think that was that was much earlier in Nick's career. I don't remember who his goalies were. Maybe Sean Burke. Not totally sure. With the Hurricanes, he had post good Cam Ward. <laughs> so he had decent Cam Ward, who evolved into not really good Cam. He also Ward. had Archer's Urbe early on. Archer's Urbe, I <laughs> want to say, was the goalie who beat the Leafs. Might have been. And again, you weren't getting prime Archer's Urbe. You were getting, his pads are pretty black now. No. <laughs> Harder survey. Yeah. You were, you were getting, pads started white, didn't change them for a decade, and that's how they looked. Mom's couch cushions are Archer survey. With the Leafs, he had 
Vesta, no, he had Andrew Berkshire. <laughs> Andrew Berkshire. Andrew I Raycroft. Hope he, I hope he did. <laughs> <laughs> he and, put Andrew Berkshire and, in that. No, he had Andrew Raycroft. And Vesta Toscala. Who was horrendous. Then he had Vesta Toscala, who was horrendous. And then I think he got fired. Uh-huh. Then he goes to Winnipeg, and he's got Andre frickin' Pavlik forever. And then... Who is not an NHL goaltender? I can finally confidently say. No, and what's that, you know what's you know what's amazing? I see. I saw Jets fans on Twitter last night. Cause, okay, the Jets lost seven four to the Montreal Canadiens. That's what caused this whole conversation. I saw Jets fans last night going, "You know what? Paul Maurice should be fired because Pavlik is in the minors right now and he's playing well." Like they didn't watch him play poorly for half a decade. Yeah, but he had that one good streak after I said he was. Holy bad. shit! He had a twenty game streak. You want to talk about riding a good performance for a while? Pa- Pavlik mm. having 20 decent games justified his whole brutal career. <laughs> justified the whole damn thing. Do you want me to play the 25-second press conference I that he did? I would love it because Paul Maurice got mad. It was the whole <laughs> game from the goaltender to, the, to every guy up front. It wasn't We're not walking away going, our goalie's got to play better. We didn't play well enough to win that game. They didn't play well enough to win that game, but they're, they're no different than everybody else in that room. We're not... We were horse... From the start, from the drop of that first puck right to the very end of it. And then he walks off because there's nothing else to say. No, Paul nope. Maurice has a history of getting pretty mad and yelling on the benches. You know, it's not the first time we saw that. We saw that with the Leafs. There was one notoriously poorly officiated game. The Leafs got completely jobbed. Uh, and I think they were down five on three in overtime against, against the Hurricanes, ironically. And after the game, you know, you get Paul Hendrick, who's just trying to be everybody's friend, and he... Timidly kind of walks up to Paul Maurice and he's like, so what happened there? And there was like the longest three seconds I've ever experienced where Paul Maurice is just angry face staring at the ground, figuring out how to not be fined (laughs) $25,000. Just sitting there and he goes, you know, there's a good story here. And, And you just see him shaking with rage and he starts to. He tried to talk as calmly as he can about the two penalties that were called. I think that was the game where Nick Antropov got suspended for throwing a stick at a ref after the game. Anyway, there's a history here. But name a good goalie Paul Maurice has ever had. Like Connor Hellebuck, who shouldn't be to blame for the that loss, shouldn't even be to blame for how poorly the Jets are doing. He has been like roughly NHL average, and that's pretty much as good as it gets. That's not just top half. Of the goalies that Paul Maurice has had. He's probably a top five, top three goalie that Paul Maurice has ever had. So I tweeted. I, I said that tweet that you read. I got I got a DM from someone who I didn't expect to get a DM from. Sportsnet stats. <laughs> and they said, um, they said, you know, you could always just ask the stats department. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny. Sometimes I forget that I can do these things. I love that the Sportsnet stats department has a great sense of humor, too. Oh, they that, do. That is my favorite follow. I'm not 100% sure because it was just the Sportsnet stats Twitter. I know a few people within the Sportsnet stats department. I, I'm not sure who I was speaking to. They have one guy in particular who works there, Steve Fallon, who is... They're all wizards there. They're all... I send them requests... And they, in record time, I'm like, how did you even find this? Where did you start your research? Do you just think of these questions on your own, research them, and then have them ready? How on earth do you do it? So my question was, what is the, well, what is the career save percentage of Paul Maurice's goalies? What do you think? Like here, Jesse, can you bring up the save percentage leaders in the NHL right now? I will do that. Because I want to give you an idea of how, like, Paul Maurice might actually be a decent coach. I, I I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say it's not good just based on the Leafs. You won't believe how not good. 
When you hear how ungood they are, you'll blow out your fucking knees. <laughs> it's just sometimes stats are hard to find because I just we've, we've discussed why. This is not Jesse's fault. Yeah, I told Jesse to look something up on NHL.com. I'm sorry. Um, so who, who is the top save percentage right now? Nick with 939. Wow, that's wow. really good. Incredible. So that's, that's the best of the best, though. Who's number 10 and what's their save percentage? Number 10. Don't say Freddie Anderson. Don't say Freddie Anderson. Don't say Freddie Anderson. It might be. He was top ten uh, for a bit. Nine twenty three Luongo, depending on it, how many people are counting like games played wise. <laughs> we're it's not, around. No, we're not worrying about that. It's around like nine twenty five Scott Darling. Okay, he played that's, 19 that's games, very yeah. good. Okay, so top ten. If you have a top ten goalie in the league, that's a good goalie. Let's go down to twenty. Twenty. Let's go down to twenty. What is the save percentage of the twentieth best goalie in the NHL right now? At Markstrom at a nine twelve. What's around? 912. Okay, that's around probably 20. around. Is that around where Connor Hellebuck is right now? Yeah, Connor Hellebuck's at a 910. Okay, so he's so not even blow. he's not even top 20. No. No. But they I mean, think they I found their expect... answer in net. Well, Overall goalies. He's young though. He's 42nd in terms of all goalies oh. played. At a 910. Like I did Also, oh, he's 42nd. Yeah. At 910. Yeah. Who is number 50? At 50, Steve Mason, 903. He's <laughs> wow, really? <laughs> played 35 games. Whoa. Wow, I thought he... Whoa. When did that happen? Yeah. Because I thought he had this resurgence. Mm-hmm. So, wow. He is the 50th best goalie. How many goalies have played? Uh, 77. Wow. Who's the worst? Let me jump to page two. I want to know two. what the worst is. Oh, it's on page two. That's not good. <laughs> it's never good when you're on page two. George Alves with a zero. Oh, that, that, oh so, okay. Seconds. So now we're talking about essentially fictional goalies. Yeah, that, that was the equipment manager of the Hurricanes. <laughs> How amazing um, is that? I'm taking. I would take a screen cap of that if I were him. Oh, totally. So who was 72nd <laughs> or whatever? Um, Second last, whatever the number was. Chris Dreiger. He played. Uh, oh, Dreiger. Dreiger from uh, the Sens. 7:33. Played 40 <laughs> minutes, allowed six goals. Oh my God. Okay. So Malcolm he, Subin he, he had one bad game. 75. But he probably had one bad game. 13. Yeah, okay. Played one so game. let's go back to Steve Mason. He was what? 50th? 50th. 50th. So he Steve Mason is having a bad year. Really bad. A bad putting my finger up one, one. year. He has had previous bad years. But, but he's also had good years. He's had good years. Paul Maurice's head coaching career, which again started in 1995-1996, the collective save percentage of the goalies he's had, unless I wasn't clear enough with the stat to look up. I think they figured Please it out. This is crazy. It's like a 6 two. No, no it's, <laughs> it's not as crazy as you think it's going to be. But they tweeted me, 0.904. Point nine oh three five to be exact. Who's got a point nine oh four? Who's well? No point nine oh three five. Steve Mason is nine oh three. Yeah. So who is like Vasilevsky? Yeah. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Tampa's been brutal. Halak is that a nine oh four as well? Yeah, and he got waived. So Paul Maurice's average goalie (laughs) should be waived. Is a waiver goalie. (laughs) That's insane. I can under, I can understand why he walked out of that press conference. Now, I wanted to be fair. Okay. Oh, oh, oh! And here's even better. These are the numbers they used. So again, and I said, you know, are you sure? Like the shots and goals of like empty net goals, like are those counted in there? Because they technically shouldn't be if we're talking about save percentage. Um, and they said empty netters not included. The 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 save percentage was a. Uh, his goalies have only stopped 35,126 shots out of a possible 38,877. So I, I tried to go even I even deeper with it, right? Because the hockey in 1995-96 was not the same as the hockey today. When did hockey really, really, really change? I would say 2005-2006 mm-hmm. after the lockout. Um, I said, what's the save percentage since the 0506 lockout? And the answer is um, we spoke about certain things and then he goes by the way since 2005 it's also 904 9037 so it is well it's point two better so yeah i mean it's like point oh 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 uh, two better do you want some paul maurice has never had a good goalie (coughs) no 
Never once. Do you want some of the league average save percentage? This is the save percentage across the entire NHL. Well, where where year, are you getting this from? Uh, hockey reference. Oh, okay. So last year, uh, 15-16, 9-15 was the league average save percentage. 9-15. So <laughs> and 10 his points below that, th- or more than 10 points. Sure do wish Andre Pavlik would come back. Oh here's the God. here's what I, I want to know. Well, and, and what he was upset about wasn't even the goalie's performance. Um. First off, we know that's, the, that's the most incredible. the most important position is always going to be goaltender. That we know. When I was thinking about it this morning, do the Winnipeg Jets seem a bit stale to you? In what way? Well, there's a lot of guys who have been there a long time. When because, they have line A, they're very exciting. Yes, they are. But I feel like there are players that have been there a long time. Like Bufflin? I am sure. Tons of players that I'll have been let there you a make long your time. Point. I'm sorry. Yeah. Players that have been there a long time because we all know that the general manager does not make trades. Okay. Except for when he does. Except for when he does, which is seldom. Twice. It took him five years to make his first trade. Okay. Like, <laughs> that's insane. Um, now, he has developed good players. He's developed a good core. At what point is it on the GM in a soft goalie market to say, ah, oh, here's our chance? But now, so having said all this about Paul Maurice and his goalies, is it Connor Hellebuck? I think it is. I think you need a better goalie than Connor Hellebuck. I think you, if you've got a team that is supposed to make the playoffs, Connor Hellebuck, no matter how great he could be, right now is not the guy you're like, yeah. yep, we're placing here's, all our hopes on him. Here's maybe a more fair question Are they putting too much on Connor Hellebuck too soon? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And I think they thought they could make up with it, uh, make up for it with Tyler Myers, Dustin Bufflin, and Jacob Truba now. Mm-hmm. I think they like, th- damn, that's not a bad. And look at all they- Is Myers hurt? I feel yes, like he, he is. is. He is oh, out. Okay. He's been yeah, out, he's been out for a while. Yeah, yeah. Part but, of it, and they're but, missing Line A, but, too. But he's one player. And yeah, Line A being out hurts, too. Marco Dano's out. Yeah, those are, those are some yeah. significant. I don't know, injuries. man. I, I still think you. I think they missed an opportunity this summer in even a James Reimer. I really think they did. Uh, Ottawa, I'm sure, would give you Andrew Hammond. Curtis McElhinney was on waivers, or, well, Gustafson, I'm, maybe those guys are Well, McElhinney's not Maybe those guy. guys aren't wonderful no, examples, but, but no, goalies no. have been available. You know what the Leafs did? You know what they had? No goaltending. What did they do? They went out and they traded spare parts for Freddie freaking Anderson. Here's what I would like to know. Who have the other Jets goalies been? Like, just Hellebuck and Hutchinson? Hutch- they got Hutchison? Hutchinson, Hellebuck, and then Pavlik buried in the minus. How's Hutchinson been? I would love to know. I just, if the market is soft, you've got a great team. Mark Shifley is looking like amazing. Dustin Bufflin's always been Dustin Bufflin. Why have you not got a goaltender? That's true. How Shifley, have you not solved this problem? If I remember correct, Brian Little's had a little bit of a resurgence. Yeah. Uh, 17 games played, 890 save percentage. God! No, so I, not only do you ha- have... So it's not even that it's Connor Hellebuck. It's, you, that's all you got. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, call a Pavlik. Okay. But you How knew much this. better than Michael Hutchison do you think he's going to be? The point is you knew this. Okay. You knew this going into the season. You knew this going into the last season and the season before. You knew Andre Pavlik wasn't good enough, but you stuck with him, stuck with him, stuck with him. You did it again last year, and now you're doing it again to Connor Hellebuck and Mike. And Mike it's Mike Hutchinson, right? Yeah. Hutchison, yeah. yeah. I think you're preaching to the choir, Adam, because Jets fans, what they scream about half the time is that Chevy... Get a goalie! Well, not even get a goalie. He won't... He doesn't do anything. This offseason <laughs> seems like the year that they should go get the goalie because Pavlik's up, and that frees up 2.9, and then they're only paying Hutchison 1.1 and Hellebuck 600 grand. So I mean, it doesn't matter. Nothing they still on Who cares with, the, with Pavlik's goal, money? The two point nine million dollars is nothing. They could have absolutely. Nah, it's they could not have, for, nothing. for Winnipeg. That's something. They to could be buried in the minors. Yeah, they yeah. could yeah. have. Winnipeg, they could have yeah. James Reimer for less than three point four. I'm sure. And that's what he signed for in F- Florida. I'm sure James would have loved to go back and be the, be the guy. But then, is James Reimer your starting goaltender? Do you, I, are you doing that? Uh, why or, not? Or do you have him splitting games with Connor Hellebuck? League average goaltending. You just yeah. need league average I goaltending. Think people are going to get caught up. Yeah, people are going to get caught up. Yes, it is. First of all, I don't know. If that's people true. are going to get caught up in the names that you're bringing up. But uh, you're, just get league average. Yeah, the. I don't think league average goaltending is that hard to find. No, we got a glut of goaltenders. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Mark Andre Fleury. What that? 
Then, then you're talking Winnipeg Jets. Wow. Potential playoff team. Not potential playoff team. Potential know. second, third round, maybe Stanley Cup if they get hot. Here's a question. Am I choosing the wrong time to bring this up? No. Because the Jets have been playing poorly. That's what Paul Maurice got so upset about. Mm-hmm. Um... Also, I think so, they need. I think they need a trade because I think the jet dressing room stale. I think they so need. Think to, I need to say they need to shock some people. It's not goaltending. It's not coaching. It's it's people well, have been there too long. Well, yeah, and I think they've they've lost a lot. They've made the playoffs once or twice, and I think that once. they've one time they haven't won a game yet. Yeah, so I think that there have been a lot of people that have been there that whole time, and I think that sometimes you get used to. Well, oh well, I guess I'll be. I still be here next year. It's not like they're going to move me out no, because they don't move anyone out. But then you start to get into things that we've criticized in the past. Bufflin's been there a long time. Do you get rid of him? I'm not saying no, Bufflin. No, no, no. I know, but this is. I'm going through players who have been there a long time. Mm-hmm. Bufflin. Well, you're not going to move. No, him. I think you keep him. Blake Wheeler. He's been fantastic. Yeah. You're not going to move him. Shifley. Why would you do that? Oh. Uh, Brian Little. Maybe I don't. I don't really think. Evander so. Evander Kane. Yeah, well, he's gone. <laughs> um, so this is the thing. Like, it, yeah, I, who do you move? If I'm a Jets fan, they got prospects. Like it's not bleak. It's not I just as think bleak need- as what we were saying in the summer. Then again, the teams we were criticizing in the summer ended up doing pretty good. Goalie, uh, I, I, I goalie. I just can't help but feel like Paul Maurice is going to get fired soon, and it's it's the Bruce Boudreaux thing in a way. It's it's. It's. I'm not calling Paul Maurice Bruce Boudreaux, by the way, but they fire him just because. Is it uh, Tortorella, how he comes into Columbus, and then now they have actual goaltending, and he looks like a good coach? Mm-hmm. And next year when, when Bobrovsky falls in. off again, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but, because because Bobrovsky seems like one of those guys, he might maybe, uh, maybe he stabilizes, but Bobrovsky won a Vesna and then was awful and, and got Todd back, Richards fired. And now he's back to winning a Vesna. Yeah. And that's not to say that's not again. I love Bobrovsky. It's great when he's great, but man, there there are some goalies that have good years and bad years. Pekarene had a bad year last year, bad, but he's back to being somewhat Pekarene. You know how much Jets fans have to be loving that we're actually talking about the Jets for a change. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Even though it's this way, I don't know. I'd love to know from Jets fans what they think. I think it's the goaltending, and I think they knew. I think the fans knew. I think management knows. And I think they've got a guy who's slow on the trigger. I saw a tweet a few years ago about Mike Gillis when he was still the guy in uh, Vancouver, still the GM. And they're like, well, <laughs> somewhere Mike Gillis is writing down plans for a sandwich he's going to make three years from now. <laughs> because you're too slow. you got to move. you got to move. And the Leafs, what they traded for Freddie Anderson, don't tell me Winnipeg couldn't have done the same thing. You know what, though? I said it's so easy to get you know, league average goaltending. It didn't look like the Leafs were getting too much better than that with Freddie at the time. And they gave up a first and a second for him. Granted, it was essentially two seconds, but yep. that's kind of a lot. Kind of. That could get you a Roman Pollock at the trade deadline.